he may start the invites early. Uh, I will give you a heads up when he's starting to do that matchmaking. Okay, so picks and bans are finished now. On blue team, we've banned out Leona, Vi, and Cassidin, which are really good solo queue champion bans. I'm interested to see how Leona is really going to pan out now that they've nerfed out Doran's, Doran's starts. It's still a viable start, and she can definitely still abuse Tarragons and that sort of stuff, but I, it's difficult to say whether or not she's still so, so OP or so broken level of engages without seeing her played a little bit more. On the opposite side, we have Thresh, Kha'Zix, and Renekton banned out. I've seen a lot of Kha'Zix played since he was nerfed, and he still seems to have a lot of success, but he definitely doesn't snowball as hard as he once did. They, they really did reduce his ratios, so just getting that slight early advantage and building that one or two item advantage isn't just going to one-shot everyone on the face of the planet anymore. Uh, thank you for the follower. And in terms of picks, then, Blue Team has picked up a Wukong, what appears to be a Wukong jungle, a support Annie, a... Um, Vain, Vain AD carry, sorry, Vain AD, Vain AD carry any support. <laughs> Cassiopeia mid, a Mundo top. And then that's going to be dealing with a Lulu, which should be mid, a top Shivana, jungle Lee Sin, and then an Alistar MF bot lane. Alistar MF bot lane is kind of interesting to me because Alistar does solve a lot of the problems that MF has. MF has no escapes and she's easily focused. And so having that giant meat shield CC monster that Alistar can, ten, can be is a pretty good option for him. That being said, though, if MF falls behind, she falls behind hard. Uh, she can pick up some easy assists with her ult, but it's not as though when you're behind you can just, like, get a reset as Jinx or get a good ult as Jinx and snowball or or position really well in a teamfight on Vayne and pick up massive amounts of kills. MF is very, very item dependent. So uh, it'll really boil down to how they play that lane and how far behind they fall or how far ahead they get. Uh, mm -hmm. Do either of you have com uh, ideas about those compositions, champion picks, anything like that? Mm, if you don't remember them, you should be able to just look at the stream. Part, I'm looking at it. Okay. I think for the most part, bot lane, it really depends on whether or not um, MF and Alistair can survive through level 6. When level 6 happens, I'm pretty sure Vayne and, uh, and Annie are going to try to like just first the MF. And if that happens, I think that lane will probably like go towards the vein side. I think they will have the advantage. But if they can survive through level six and they don't die, then it's a little bit harder to say. Um, the opposite is also true. If Vayne gets killed early, um, I think he'll get shut down quite hard too. So I think that lane's pretty interesting. I think the early game should be really intense. Um... I think Lulu mid is really strong right now, so I don't know how Cassiopeia will deal with her, but I don't know. Cassiopeia is pretty good, too. Um... Yeah, I'm interested because Cassiopeia has a lot of problems if she's poked out of lane. Yeah. And Lulu, Lulu is a hugely advantage. dominant lane force where yep. if, if she gets at any lane advantage, if she lands an early engage, she just zones you from that point on. Yeah, for sure. I think Lulu has the advantage in that one. And for top lane, mm, I don't expect much action up there. Yeah, I don't think much is gonna happen. But I think it's interesting that Mundo didn't grab TP and went ignite. Yeah, I would usually expect to see a, a teleport on him. Yeah, that would be the normal summoner. So he might try to play more aggressively or something. But it depends. If he okay. doesn't get any kills from that ignite and like early aggression, then he'll probably you know, fall behind in terms of what he can do in the late game, because he can't split push as well and stuff like that and help his team without the TP. I, I would argue, though, that Mundo definitely, definitely outscales Shivana. So unless Shivana gets massively ahead by, by using her teleport properly, Mundo is going to be a much larger threat come late game. It's also worth noting that the team without the Mundo only has one Ignite, so if they don't pick up a Morello Namicon, that one, though, if goes late, will be a beast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although Lulu oftentimes will build a Morello Nomicon. It fits into her build very easily. Um, it depends on what she's running for runes, though. If she's already running CDR runes, then it's kind of a waste to do double 20% CDR. But if she thought ahead, and if I were her, I would be running no CDR in, in my standard build, and then being uh, picking up a, an Athenes and Morello Nomicon in order to deal with that. Oh, 
overall, I think I prefer Nain's team, to be honest. But, I don't know. It's pretty close, to be honest. Yeah, that being said, though, um, how are they going to deal with MF if MF does get ahead? They have so much peel for her. I don't think... I don't think MF is really a problem um, in terms of, like... I don't know how I put no, this. No, MF definitely doesn't snowball as hard as other AD carries, but they do have a fantastic peel comp. If I were them, and I knew that we were building into this sort of a team setup, I would have picked an AD carry that scales a little better. Something like a, a Jinx. Um, even... Well, I hate suggesting anyone play Kog'Maw in his current state, but it almost looks like they're running a Protect the Kog'Maw. Because Lulu, uh, Lulu right now, if she's building AP, which obviously she is because she's mid, an AP Lulu come late game, her ult is something like eight, nine hundred bonus health. Her shield is like three, four hundred damage, and like she just has so many tools to just keep an AD carry alive. Combine yeah. that with an Alistar, combine that with a Lee Sin kick, combine that with Shivana ult, and just general body blocking, and that would be pretty terrifying if they had a late game ADK, uh, AD carry. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think if they ran a better um, you know, carry for late game as an AD, it would have been much better. But as it stands, I, I think that I think that they can probably kill the MF, even with the PL. It's it's hard to say though, of course. But they do have any Wukong combo, it's really strong. And Cassiopeia on top of it. So mm -hmm. it's hard. It, MF it, doesn't it's have an interesting. escape. It's definitely interesting that Cassiopeia went for a flask. Hmm. Yeah. I, I don't normally see that. I would usually see a Doran's opening by Cassiopeia because she wants to play aggressively. Uh, may maybe it's just she knew that she was going to be mm. lane and wanted the extra sustain, which I'm fine with. Probably. That's a good choice. It's Probably, just yeah. not what you would normally see. And both supports still running Doran's shield. I honestly don't think that Doran's shield nerf was that big. I, I honestly think that Doran's shield is still probably one of the best support items to start. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a, an amazing starting item. Uh, that being said, though, it, it makes it so that you have to be pulling off your hard engage. The issue with it before wasn't that it was, oh, we see an invade coming in with the, the word from Lee Sin. He knows that Wukong's going in, so he's going to follow Wukong as soon as Wukong goes for the buff. I think he's just going to try and... Yeah, just nice it deal. as well. I think Wukong should have seen that word be dropped. Mm, okay, yeah. He's pulling it to the brush, so now Lee Sin has a harder time to see the HP. He should just be killing him. He should go in, yeah. Yeah, he, he should have just still, killed Wukong. He should have he should have tried to fight there, yeah. Back mid lane, we see Cassiopeia getting a little bit of a level advantage and landing a lot of pain onto Lulu. Lulu is very low on mana. If you don't manage your resources and you don't use your auto attacks effectively as Lulu, it's going to be an incredibly rough lane. Especially because Cassiopeia went for flask, so you can continue to harass more easily. Yeah, massive amounts of damage coming out here. Elster going down bottom lane. Yeah. Um, another thing to note on the bot lane is that uh, you can actually focus Alistair pre six. Alistair isn't that great, especially with an MF. MF doesn't really have anything to help him out. So if Alistair gets out of position, they can focus him pretty easily. For sure, yes. And bullying Alistair is so easy to do because his his combo is so easily telegraphed. Oh, and he just. Miss flashed there. I don't know what what he was doing there, but he flashed in. I guess he could, he thought that he could get the MF, but nothing really happened. He just burned it. Yeah. It, he if I was him, if even if it was a failed flash, you don't want to do the fight. Just use your combo and get out. Uh, yeah, we do see a, a gank coming in yeah. from. No, wait. Never mind. Lee Sin stayed. He Lee almost died low. to white. Lee Sin's too low to, to gank right now. Mundo almost picking up a kill with ignite on Shivana. Yeah, that's that her that ignite. It's doing a lot of work. It ignites an, always a good summoner, regardless, even if you're Mundo. Gives you a lot of um, pressure for early game. You can bully him out of lane now. He has the uh, lane advantage. Yeah, getting that early experience is huge. People always argue about, oh, I have a CS advantage or I have whatever. Honestly, being ahead in experience is a far bigger deal usually. Lulu going to be taken down. No, never mind. I thought there was one more tick coming out, but nope, she's able to walk away with about 18 health left. 
So Cassiopeia is going to get a huge experience advantage here and get a significant amount of damage onto this tower. Lee Sin should not be able to pick up anything here. He's just making sure that she doesn't take any significant amount of tower damage. The thing with this this top lane though is that um, after that after he um, bullied Shivana out of lane, he also pushed the tower uh, the the creep wave into the tower. So Shivana lost uh, like one wave of EXP and gold. It's a pretty big deal. Lee Sin's coming in around behind here. I would expect Alistar to initiate this, and unfortunately. Oh, he does. He dead. does a delayed initiate, but does not land a headbutt. Q misses from Lee Sin, not quite connecting, and that's just they're going to walk away at this point. There's yeah, no way they're going to secure they're, that. They're gone. I'm I would have communicated with Alistar a little bit better. Said, okay, this is what we're doing. This is the fight we want, and get Alistar. Even if he has to flash pulverize, uh, he could have set up that kill so easily. And unfortunately, Lee Sin did rush his Q. I, I would wait until they're either CC'd or you know they're running in a straight line to use it. Um, I would give bot lane right now the advantage to any Vayne, because just looking at the CS, Vayne is up a lot, and considering it's a Vayne, I'm surprised how far ahead he is. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that boils down to how aggressively the Annie is playing, yeah, just constantly sure. zoning and pressuring. Exactly, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like how he said in all chat, I, I saw the word pro. <laughs> Delay OP. Well. Well, blue team has a 1.1k advantage so far. And that's Old mostly Wonder just from farm. Shivana very low at top. After brawling it out for a bit. Lee Sin's trying has... for something mid. If Lulu Mundo sets this up. advantage for now. Oh, okay, this gank is interesting. Uh, he's he's missed, still not able to connect. Though, to unfortunately. He needs to start hitting them, or he's not gonna kill anyone. I feel he's rushing the Qs. He's using them far too early. That's true, yeah. And Lulu goes down to the counter gank, Ooh. coming in by Wukong. A good response by him to say, okay, we know they want to fight in this lane. Let's just show up and set up a fight. Down bot lane now. Uh, we have another fight bot. coming out. Vayne going a little aggressive there. No one punishes her for it, but her positioning in that fight was not that great from what I saw. Yeah, so blue team bot lane does have a small experience advantage. As we mentioned, or you guys mentioned during the loading screen, they want to push their level 6 engage. That's when they want to fight, and they want to pressure it as hard as they physically can. Wukong is standing on a ward here. Wukong standing on a ward, yeah. That gank's not gonna happen. Mundo would have picked up a kill on Shivana had he hit this one cleaver. But unfortunately, uh, he missed it. I would say that blue team has a significant advantage at this stage in the game. I mean, it doesn't look like it, but if you look at the CS difference, it's across the board in every single lane. Basically, they have a... A significant CS advantage. Yeah, they, they've built up not quite 2k, which is, it's 8 minutes into the game. They're 2k up, that's huge. Yeah. Good Condemn coming in from Vayne, just knowing what she can set up. Teleport There's comes in TP from Shivana. Yep, yeah, the TP might kill this Vayne. I think he's probably dead here. Yeah, MF just needed... Oh, no, no. No. Nope. MF failed. Nope, she needed it. to walk directly towards the tower, and as soon as Vayne came out, she needed to AA and stutter step. It looks like she didn't have enough mana for Q, so the, the kill was somewhat questionable, but the way she walked, positioned, and stutter step there uh, definitely did not help her, her case there. I'm going to back this up to make sure I'm not going crazy, but I don't think Shivana activated Burnout as soon as she did the dive. Oh, okay, that, that's definitely possible. I didn't quite notice that. Let me back this up and I'll just double check Shivana that. Shivana is getting farther and farther behind because of that gank as well. Now Mundo gets more chance to farm freely. Shivana's losing CS and experience. Okay, so what happened was Shivana used Burnout to get there fast, and so it was on cooldown, and she didn't have it. Wow. Well, mm. That's a pretty bad play, yeah. Yeah, at this point, there's two, two and a half levels of experience advantage. No, I guess only two on Mundo. And he's using that to constantly just pressure this tower. Say, okay, if you if you try and leave, if you try and help any other lane, I'm just going to push in, deny UCS, take your tower, and just essentially win the game through pressure. Like, the, the amount of damage he's throwing out, just not letting her anywhere near. 
Yep. And that's going to be a kill. Pick up a kill here. Yep, got one. Got him. <laughs> Mundo has a really easy time because he can build MR safely because they have both solo laners that are doing AP damage. Or magic damage, I meant to say. Master Bro, we have two giveaways going. One of them is for people watching the stream. If you're not watching the stream, then you're not going to win. One of them is for Facebook, which if you have to leave, you have to leave. But we do okay. giveaways at the end of games, not during them. That would be dumb. So, I'd like to point out... Oh, Lee Sin? I... No. Can't do anything. Lee Sin's gonna die here, I think. Yeah. That was oh, a really good play from Cassiopeia, and I, I am impressed with how she's doing this game. But I have no idea what Lulu tried to do. She flashed in with the burn on her. All, all Cassiopeia had to do was use E before the Whimsy landed, and that's the easiest thing you could possibly do. Well... Lulu misplayed there. She didn't ult. I'm assuming she should have ulted there. I don't know why she. She was have... she was trying to flash Whimsy and then alt herself to set yeah. up the Lee Sin gank. Yeah. But yeah. literally all Cassiopeia had to do was use an E before Whimsy landed. Whimsy has a significant travel time now. Oh okay. It's not instant. It used to be. Oh I see. So like I was gonna say, uh, it's interesting to note in the top lane, Shivana rushed the Warden's Mail as opposed to a Negatron Cloak, where most of Mundo's damage is yeah, that's magic. True. The Warden's Mail isn't going to actually do very much for her here, and that's only gonna bring her even further behind in this matchup. Agreed. Now we, we see a significant misplay oh, bot, bot lane. lane. Is gonna... Ooh, bot lane. Wow, Vayne got... Wow. Vayne... Is he gonna get out? He is. They might even oh both god. get out. Oh, that oh Q. Oh my god, the Qs. Oh god. And oh that's gonna god. be a complete cleanup. Clean right clean the the clean They're gonna get three kills right here. <laughs> oh wow. So I, I was gonna comment, there was a number of things that were misplayed there. Annie tried to go aggressive with her alt. No one was in position to They're follow it up. They're getting really greedy here. Okay. No, they're going to be perfectly safe. But, so, th basically what happened there, Annie tried to engage with her alt, landed Tibbers on to, I believe it was Alistar, I could be wrong on that. No one was in position to follow up. Then they counter-engaged using the MF alt, just across all of them, got a huge amount of damage onto, onto both Annie and, uh, and onto Vayne. Then at that point, Alistar went in, used his alt, and just soaked up any damage they tried to throw back at them while Lee Sin was coming down for his gank. Unfortunately, Lee Sin was not able to connect with his Qs, and uh, Ofega on Vayne here did a, a great job of disengaging and escaping. But overall, just a lot of misplays well, just from both teams. Another Mundo dive! Dive, 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 dive! I think you got him. Yep. Easy. Alright, we'll see if he lands his Q here. Nope, misses his Q again, and that's going to be another double kill for Cassiopeia. They really need to realize that this cast is starting to become a problem. Mm -hmm. um, I, I and really and they are trying to stop her. I, I think that they should probably use Alistair to help gank the uh, Cassiopeia. Lee Sin building a Riggle's Lantern. Yeah, Lee Sin is having a lot of issues this game. And I, I don't want to just like shit all over him or anything, but... He does need to work on his cues. If you're going to play Lee Sin, you need to be able to land skill shots. You need to be able to manage your cooldowns and resets, and uh, also, especially your auto attack resets, because you need to be weaving skills in between your your damage so that you actually get use of your passive. And if he's not able to do that, well, maybe Lee Sin isn't the champion for him. Ali's just getting bullied really, really easily. There's nothing they can really do, and his damage is so high right now. Yeah, I, I don't know about this Riggles thing. It, it, I just don't think it's a great item anymore. No, they are buffing it in the next patch. They're making it automatically evolve into a new item after you've killed, I think it's like 15 camps using it. So they're, they're trying to bring it back, but right now, no, it is never worth building. Not yeah. on a single champion is Riggles <laughs> Lantern worth building. Yep. Lee Sin's trying to camp top here. We'll see if Siobhan is able to set anything up. They again. They know Mundo's an issue. It's they they know they need to deal with it. Hard to believe that he's gonna die even to this no. gank. There's no way. It's too They don't big. have any damage. Yeah, he's just too tank. He can one v two here almost. Yeah, at least he's gonna die. So. Well, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Giovanna also picked up a cloth armor, so still no MR to this for this one though. Yeah, I think Shivana is going to be fine because Mindawalt is down. They're not going to be able to dive that. Uh, Blue is. team is now responding with a dragon, or or they should be responding with a dragon. Yep, it just got pinged out. Yep, took it. Cassiopeia continuing it's to pressure warded. mid. It's warded, but they're just like ignoring the ward. I, I find a lot of teams do that. They they see a pink ward and they just they don't do anything about it, and it's been. They don't a... need to, of course, in this game. But normally you'd clear that ward first. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they knew Lee Sin was dead, so it wasn't as though it was going to be stolen away. But anytime there's an opportunity to clear out a ward, you definitely need to do so. Yeah, I mean, I mean the chance is l slim, but there is the chance that someone just comes out of somewhere and just, you know, shoots a skill and kills it because they know what uh, HP it's at, you know? It's not big. Of, it's, it's not a big threat in this game because they don't have like Ezreal or Jinx or anything like some global alts or anything. But mm -hmm. normally you should take care to clear the words. Wonder attempting to hunt down some people. Wonder just does whatever he pleases. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty much. He's just really big. He just they can't do anything about him. Yeah. Uh, the way Shivana chose to optimize her items isn't really helping her much, whereas Mundo's build helps a lot. Right. And that's just the wombo combo they have bot lane, where they can do that every time Tibbers is up. Just land it on someone, combo it in. It. The only thing that could have saved them was an Alistar alt and a really well-timed exhaust, and there's just no real risk to that play. They can do that over and over again. I'm personally not a fan of running a passive support against an Annie because you... I don't know. No, you want to poke support. You can, yeah, you, you want to either poke them or, or you just play just as aggressively as well. You can go like Leona or something. And you can. I think that works quite well as well. But you Leon, need Leona works well. My favorite is Karma and Lulu. Oh, the Karma. Yeah, yeah Karma's amazing. They both work. About... They both work. You, you basically, you need to have the damage or the peel. I mean, you need the damage regardless. <laughs> Because if you don't return any of the damage while Annie's on you, you you're just going to lose overall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've also seen Soraka work really well because you just bait things out so easily. It's not the ideal pick, but she has some okay poke, and her sustain just cancels out any engage. Really Soraka, good Wu Wukong alt coming in here. Yep, for sure. Uh, flash uh, alt flash comes was out. questionable, but I guess they didn't punish him for it. No, he, he needed to get away from the Shivana. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because Shivana was in behind Vayne, so it was relatively uh, easy for him to be able to set up that play. Yeah, it was okay. I don't know, I think the Vayne flash into three people there was kind of questionable, because his, his HP was really low at the time, but mm. they were all so, like, I don't know, they were so scared, they didn't even... They'd used they every single one of their cooldowns and summoner skills getting to yeah. that point, so yeah, she instead wanted to get away from the alting Shivana. Yeah. I was just gonna say earlier, um, I think that Soraka's actually a really good solo queue support, a lot better than most people realize. Because everyone Mundo plays very... might get the second kill. Mm, yep. He's gonna die for it, I don't think it was worth But oh well. No, that slightly gets Lulu back into the game. Yeah. Lulu is down about 80 CS, like it's a huge, huge CS discrepancy right now. And she was 0 4 0. Lulu is a very strong mid laner, but you need to be able to bully your opponent, you need to be able to use your auto attacks effectively, and unfortunately, if you're being zoned like that, then you're not going to have any real effect on the game. Yep. Red team's turret has been uh, I don't actually know if that Lee should have kicked there. That was a bad idea, for sure. Mm -hmm. He needs to realize that he just can't solo fight him. The temptation yeah, of kicking is just this point, big. it's just down to the blue team to close out the game. Yeah, the game is pretty much over, to be honest. Mm -hmm. At that point, though, you, you are trying to look for ways to counterplay, and uh, unfortunately at this point, Purple Team doesn't have that many options. Uh, they have a couple wards out to try and catch people out of position and cycling between lanes, and that's an awesome thing for them to do. It's in solo queue especially, you can abuse people taking wraiths when there's a team fight going on. You can abuse people splitting up and staying low health. 
and that can definitely get you back into matches. It's a little late for that this game, but it's always something to keep an eye on. What could you have done better? Could I have roamed better? Could I have ganked better? Could I have CS'd better? Which they definitely could have. But at this point, there's just not much they can do. Unfortunately, yeah. They, they don't have the opportunity to steal objectives because Lee Sin's too far behind to even engage onto the objectives. They don't have the ability to make picks because everyone on the enemy team is so far ahead in experience. Like, they are going to get this vein, or they should get this okay. vein. So, not, I want to point out the okay. fact that Shivana stole her chainmail for uh, a cloak. Oh, the kick, the kick. Oh, <sighs> they finally got the kill. Uh, but they're going to get wiped here, I think. Yeah, they should be able to because Pia is Cassiope now in range. Is coming down. Okay, I'm just going to get out, but everyone else is dead. Well, I want to point out that I actually think that their team, the Purple's team, is actually quite dependent on staying even or ahead. Because if you get behind with MF or Alistair or Lee or Lulu, I'm pretty sure there's like no way to come back, pretty much. Yeah, they're all, all early game champions. Are they're early dependent. to mid game. Yeah, they're dependent on making sure they don't lose the early Basically, mid game. Basically, they're not good beginners, dude. What? Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Yeah, like I was saying, Shivana sold her chainmail that she built early on so that she could pick up a Spectre's cowl. So I think she yeah. realized that I it was the magic heard... damage killing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Russ. <laughs> it's possible that he's watching. We usually recommend people yeah. don't do that because it'll be distracting. But yeah, it's definitely possible. Also, he's someone he in hurting. chat is essentially shit-talking people. No, um, this is a constructive environment for people to learn. So yeah, if you're going to shit-talk, I would suggest you leave. If not, a mod will be banning you soon. The point of these games is to help people identify mistakes and help them fix those mistakes. So, there are going to be a lot of issues, there's going to be a lot of bad plays, and there's going to be a lot of good plays. So, yeah, it, it just I'll leave it at that. Anyways, at this point, blue team really does just need to end out the game. A Baron would be a really easy, easy call for them to do. They they have a lot of vision of where the enemy team is. There's a ward inside the enemy base. The, the lanes are pretty pushed up. So they can do this Baron without any real risk. And Vayne does shred Barons very, very quickly, as does Cassiopeia. So they're going to take that away real quick while Mundo's being a, a very large meat shield and distracting them. After that point, I would suggest they heal up buy their final items, and then just barrel down mid with Mundo going top. Or they could do four bot and Mundo top. Mundo is going aggressive against four people, yay! I wonder how this is going to turn out. Yeah, th this seems a little much. Yeah. Uh, Vayne is here, Vayne went in way too deep. I think they still win this fight because his team followed up. Yeah. Yeah, he, they're definitely going to win that fight and they should be able to end the game off of it. But my concern, uh, Vayne went way out of position. She dove into the middle of the enemy team and got yeah. chunked half her health immediately. Uh, if they had turned and focused her, they could have killed her. Maybe, maybe. They would have lost the fight anyway, they're just so far ahead. Vayne could have died though, I definitely think that was... He could have played better than that, but... Mm -hmm. He's so far ahead. I want to point out that um, Purple Team has very little CC, actually. They're very reliant on the Lulu and Alistar having gotten ahead, and both yeah. of those lanes got pretty much destroyed. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, their only real CC is basically Alistar and Lulu, and that, I don't know, just like, you need more, I think. Yeah, it's, Lulu's it's great hard. at disengaging single targets, but that's about it. She, the enemy team has re like a really really good like CC comp. They have a lot of stuns and stuff, mm -hmm. and you know, and the perma slow from Mundo. Okay, so Brian, do you want to set up the the next game once you're finished setting up your new monitor? Also, if I think it was System Thirty Two. <laughs> Uh, sorry, Spool32. It's one of Requiem's friends who requested we let him in. 
Uh, we see another Annie alt coming out. The Annie alts have not been on point this game. Like, it, it's not mattering because they are so far ahead, but I've seen almost every time I've noticed him using the Annie alt, no one's in position to follow up. Yeah. They're just taking it slow, I guess. They're just pushing every lane. Main's on bot. Two people are three people are top. They got the tower. Yeah, and this is the right decision. They, they're now hard engaging. They're landing a lot of damage on Shivana. Lulu all comes Shivana through, and they're just going to walk away. They need to turn back Lulu. and just do the inhib. Yeah, no, they, they're just fighting unnecessarily. I, I don't know. I guess I guess Mundo's buying them time, too, but they're... I don't know. They, they want kills, and yeah. this is something you see this so often in solo queue. This is pretty greedy. I mean, I get that they're ahead, but they shouldn't be doing this if they're playing seriously. Like, Annie should have died there. Mm -hmm. And Wukong yeah. wasn't far behind. Yeah, they're just too far ahead, though. Bay is just taking free inhibs. Uh. I think Cassiopeia can die? No, never mind. What? Yeah. This, right, so this is going to be the game now. Oh. They are going to close it out. This is over for sure. Yeah, Brian's going to start inviting people. So if you get an invite from someone named Felvrick, please accept it. That is the next workshop game. I think it mostly boils down to two things. Their team comp wasn't that great, in my opinion. And all their lanes pretty much lost. So, unfortunately... Can I join the workshop? It's hard to... what? No, please don't. <laughs> so they decided not to end the game again, and... They're just trying with them at this point. They need to just end the match and be done with it. Yes, or they can just forfeit on the other side. They just need to forfeit. Mm -hmm. There's no point of playing on a game that you already know you lost. I mean, I would understand if their team comp was a little better and like they could take some fights and stuff. But yeah, it it's an early impossible. to mid game team comp that had yeah. to snowball, and that didn't I happen. Think Lulu is someone that like you can just play him without actually practicing. I don't know. I I don't really play Lulu much, so I don't know how that matchup went. But Lulu is somewhat difficult to make work. Like you have to be doing your auto attack resets. If you're not landing auto attacks, her burst isn't even that great. And she's yeah, she's out of position. No, oh, minions are here. They again just. Hit the tower. Be done with it. Alright, so that is going to finally be the match here. Spool 32 is the guy, yeah. Okay, so sorry for this slightly one-sided match there. Unfortunately, we, we match people based on their solo queue rating, and being early in the season, a lot of ratings are a little bit off at the moment. In terms of... Builds are, again, difficult to comment about because of the gold discrepancy. Uh, Vayne's build is really standard. Annie builds... Rod of Ages is only good if you get it early game. But if you're snowballing that heavily, it's a fine item on Annie. It always has been, always will be. That being said, Deathfire Grasp is sort of what you expect to see on Annie support. Because it's just that instant burst. You, you're flash alting and taking out a single target, a single priority target. Uh, but overall, her build is okay. Wukong build, really, really standard if you're going for a damage setup. Uh, Cassiopeia build, again, standard. We would have expected to see Leander's coming out next. And then maybe a late game Rylai's or a Banshee's Veil. Mundo's build is standard except for the Leandries. And I have actually seen Leandries on Mundo before. Yeah, it's a luxury item. Yep, it works. Lee Sin unfortunately did not get very far in his build. He wasn't able to really set up anything. 
but the direction he was going was fine, except for the Riggles Lantern. Until they buff Lantern, and if it ever really does become a viable option, right now, no, it, it's just not worth it. It doesn't do anything for you that you really need it to. Shivana build, we already complained about her building all eight, all uh, armor when she was versus magic damage. She eventually did crack that by selling her items. That set her even further behind, though, so it, it, it's sort of catch-22 at that point. It, selling your items to get something else usually is not worth it, because you're giving up any possible advantage you might have had left. Um, Lulu, again, didn't get enough farm to really see what she was going to build into, but what she has is fine. Alistar going for a um, Talisman of Ascension. Which is fine, like yeah. she was going for a Merlinomicon next. Merlinomicon next? Yeah, which is what we suggested to deal, to deal with Amundo. I didn't have a chance to look at her at her runes. Building two 20% CDR items is only worth it if you're not really running any CDR runes. Uh, you'll mm -hmm. probably have some for Masteries regardless, so it's okay. But yeah, just, just something to keep in mind in terms of gold efficiency. MF's build is perfectly fine. I would have expected to see um, a Last Whisper coming out as like third or fourth item if she got that far. But overall, perfectly fine. Brian, I'll have you invite me to that, please, so I can spectate. I think MF should have upgraded her boots a little earlier, but... Mm, yeah, unfortunately, though, MF doesn't really rely on auto-attacks that much. She's very, very alt-reliant. So, well, yes, she does want some Tier 2 boots. They're not actually that amazing on her. Oh, I just mean, like, she just needs the extra movement speed. Yeah, fair.